Hey guys, and welcome to part two of my respawn tutorial. So in the last one, we got it set up where you could walk into this box and then you'll die. And then after a few seconds, you'll respawn. And then after a few more seconds, the old corpse will get deleted. Uh, but if you wanted this to work in a multiplayer game, which I'm sure many of you do, then I would recommend making a few changes. So first of all, let's just come up here and see what it looks like if we run it in a network scenario. So let's change this to, uh, we'll do a listen server and then we'll do two. So that way we'll have a listen server and then we'll have a client. And then go ahead and hit play. So we got our listen server over here on the left and our client over here on the right. So if you test this out, it actually uh, appears to work pretty well. And the reason it looks like it's working pretty well is because the server and the client are always agreeing that the player has overlapped with his kill box and they're always agreeing that he should die. And that will work well enough as long as the server and the client always agree on that. However, I'm sure as many of you know, uh, it is possible for the server and the client to be out of sync with one another. So for example, if the player is like right here, so he's really close, uh, it's possible that the server might think that he's overlapping, but the client might think that he's not, or the other way around, the client might think that he's overlapping and the server uh, doesn't think so. And so in that case, only one of the server or the client will end up killing the player and the other one won't, and then they'll become out of sync. And this is a real possibility in networked games. So we don't want to rely on the client and the server um, staying in sync kind of on their own um, because it's definitely possible, I'm sure as many of you know, like I just said, it's very possible that your position on the client is not exactly the same as your position on the server. That's why you can kind of get shot through walls and stuff sometimes. Well, not exactly, but it's very possible that um, the server can think that you hit the kill box, but the client didn't. And so a more proper way to do this would be to have the collision only happen on the client, for example. And then when the client detects that he's hit this kill box, he lets the server know, and then the server kind of lets everybody else know. So that's the way we're going to implement it so that we can do this the correct way. All right, so to do that, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to this kill box, so, or this kill zone. And we want to make a small little change in here to kind of make it more like what I talked about, where we only want this to happen, or we only want this collision to happen on the client or the locally controlled character. So we can do that real easily by just, let's just unhook this for a second. We can do that real easily by just checking if this character that we uh, overlapped with is locally controlled. So we'll say is locally controlled. And so if it is, then we'll go ahead and call kill. So that's really all we need to do here on this side of things. Oh, why is it? Oh, right. We need to hook up our player again. So let me just kind of drag this around. And there we go. So now we compile. And I'm actually going to run this real quick to kind of show you what I was talking about before, uh, if they were to get out of sync. So let's say on the client, uh, so the client here thinks that he's collided with this box, but the server hasn't. And you can see now I'm in this weird state where the, if I'm walking around, you can see on the right, he's ragdolling, but on the left, he's walking around. And so this is what I mean by out of sync. And this is obviously I induced it by adding this check here, but this is very possible even if this wasn't, even if this check wasn't here, because like I said, it's possible for the server and the client to be out of sync. And so you want to avoid things like that by doing something like this. And making sure that the collision only happens on, you know, in, on one machine, basically, so that there can be no disagreements. Um, but now that we have the collision happening only on one machine, we need to make sure that we tell the other machines about it. So let's come back here to the third person character, and we're going to add a few events real quick. So these events are going to handle the network or the replication of the killing of the player. So we're going to add three. We're going to add one. So add custom event. And we're going to call this kill, and then in parentheses, we're going to put server. So this is going to run on the server. So up here, let's change this to run on server, and let's change replicates to reliable. And then the next one we want is, well, let's say add custom event again, and we're going to call this one kill, and then in parentheses, we're going to put multi for multicast. So this is going to get, or this is going to be multicast or ran on all 
instances. So let's change this to multicast and we'll set this to reliable. And we're setting it to reliable because we obviously we need this message to be reliable so that there's no way it can fail to be sent because obviously somebody getting killed is a pretty important event in your game. You don't want it to be discarded. And then finally, we want one more. So add custom event and we'll call this finalize kill and in parentheses, again, we're gonna put server because this one is also gonna run on the server. And I'll kind of explain these uh, as we go along and implement them, but for now, let's just go ahead and create them. And again, we wanna make sure we set this uh, finalized kill to run on server and to be reliable. Okay, so now that we have this set up, we wanna change our kill function a little bit. So if you remember, this kill function is getting called from our kill zone, and it's only getting called for locally controlled players. So we want this handle kill, which basically just does ragdoll. We want that to happen for the locally controlled player. Uh, we want the camera boom stuff to attach to the mesh. We want that to happen locally because obviously the server doesn't care about where the client's camera is. Um, but after this, we kind of want this other stuff to happen later. So let's just go ahead and unhook this. And I'm just going to drag it down here for right now. We'll come back to it a little bit later. So up here, where we have that other stuff, we now want to tell the server that we are being killed. So to do that, we can just call our little kill server event. So we'll say kill server. So again, just to recap, um, all we've done so far is uh, when the player gets killed, he ragdolls, he attaches his camera to his mesh, and then he tells the server that he was killed. Um, and we haven't done anything with game mode yet because we'll be doing that later. So it's pretty simple so far. So when the server gets the message that the player was killed, all he's gonna do is multicast it to everybody else to let everybody else know that he was killed. So we're gonna call kill multi. And again, that's just gonna call this event down here. And since we have it set to multicast, it's gonna run on all the machines, including the server. So anything we have here is gonna run on all the machines, including the server. So inside of here, we wanna add a check for if it's locally controlled. So we'll say is locally controlled. And we'll put a branch. So the reason we're adding this check is because if it is locally controlled, then we don't want to do this. We don't want to call this handle kill function because it's already been called for the locally controlled player up here. So if it is locally controlled, um, we don't want to do that. But if it's not, then we want to call handle kill. So let's come up here, copy handle kill, and hook that up. So this is gonna run on the server and it's gonna run on all the other clients that are connected that are not the client that, um, you know, not the client that actually hit the thing and told the server that he's been killed. It's running on everybody else. But for the guy that did actually hit the box and told the server that he was killed, we want to finalize the kill. We wanna call finalize kill because essentially uh, once we get here, we the message kind of has gone around you know, from the client to the server, and now the server has confirmed that it was killed, and it's come back to the client. So we're gonna call finalize kill. And again, this runs on the server, which is really important because we're basically gonna be hooking up this code that we moved to this finalize kill. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's move this over. And this needs to run on the server because it's using this third person game mode. It's calling get game mode. And the game mode only exists on the server. If you try to call get game mode on a client, it's going to return nothing. Um, because like I said, the game mode only exists on the server. So anything you do with the game mode has to run on the server, which is why this is running on the server. Okay, so again, uh, let me just recap this real quick. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. So what's happening um, when in the kill zone? When it overlaps with something, it checks if it's a player. And then if it is a player, it checks if it's a locally controlled player. And again, this is just to make sure that, you know, no disagreements happen, that the collision is only happening on one machine, so there's no way we can get any uh, disputes. So if it is locally controlled, then we'll go ahead and we'll actually care about it, and we'll say, go ahead and kill this character. So if we go to this event, uh, this is in our third person character, and this is locally controlled still. So we locally ragdoll, we locally uh, attach our camera to our mesh, and then we t finally we tell the server that, hey, we were killed. And then that calls this. And the server says, all right, let me just tell everybody else that you were killed, which comes down here. And then down here, we check if it's locally controlled. And if it's not, then we call handle kill. And this just ensures that everybody else gets uh, or sees the ragdoll effect. 
And then if it is locally controlled, that means the message has gone full circle. And we can finally finalize our kill. So we call finalize kill on the server. And then down here is where we do that, uh, where we wait. And then we tell the game mode that we've killed the player. And the game mode, again, is where the player is, you know, the the controller, you know, changes. So he possesses, he goes from possessing the corpse on the ground to spawning a new character and possessing that one instead. And then it waits another five seconds, and then finally it destroys the corpse on the ground. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what it does. So again, I got the server on the left, the listen server on the left, and the client on the right. And you can see I walk over here. And when I die, the server sees that I died, and the client also sees that I died. And then he respawns. And then after a few more seconds, you can see they both get deleted on both. Now let's just test out the server real quick as well. So the client can see that the server died. The server sees the server died. The server respawns. We can see him respawn. And then he gets deleted. So it works now. And I know you're probably thinking it looks exactly like it did 10 minutes ago. But I assure you this is a much better way to do it, a much safer way to do this, where you're not going to get any weird bugs where it becoming out of sync. And uh, one more thing I wanted to mention, uh, I'm not going to really go into it in this tutorial, but I just wanted to mention it in case people had questions about it. Because uh, you can see when, whenever I respawn, I'm always kind of respawning at the same spot. And this is just using Unreal's built-in like spawn system. It basically just picks uh, one of these player starts, and I only have one of them right now. But if I had more, it would still just kind of pick one of them. I think it even picks the same one every time. It's not There's like really not any logic behind it as far as I have seen. So if you want to add respawn points and kind of add logic to where your player respawns, like maybe you want him to spawn at a spawn point that's close to a teammate, or maybe you want him to spawn at a spawn point that's on a specific side of the map, what you would need to do is inside of the game mode. So if you go to the go to your game mode, and you should have over here on the left overrides, you should have a choose player start. So if you implement this by default, it's just going to give you this empty thing here. And so you can override this to actually return a different spawn point. And the spawn point that it's expecting you to return is actually just an actor. So you don't have to return a player start, but of course you can. But in here is where you would write your logic of, okay, let me find my closest teammate. And then let me find the closest spawn point to that teammate. And then let me just return that. And again, there's so many different ways you can write this function that I'm just not even going to try to explain all the ways to do it, but you basically just need to return any actor that you want the player to spawn at, and he'll just spawn at that spawn point. So that's basically what that's for. If that's something you want in your game or that you need in your game, you would do it inside of the choose player start. And I just thought I'd mention that because I know a lot of people probably don't care, but in case you did, that's where you would do that. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon page. Uh, if you want to support my videos, I'd really appreciate it. It's a uh, link is in the description. Uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.